G'day mates, this is Jordan with PokeFuel, where we help you fuel your obsession with Pokemon. And today we're going to be talking about slabs. Okay, now slabs, for those who don't know, are uh, essentially, this is something that I didn't know when I first started getting back into it this year, is they're basically graded cards. That's what a slab's called, plastic slab. It's kind of what people are referring to them as now. I have these slabs. Now, I want to talk a little bit about them because if you're interested in buying PSA cards, Beckett cards, any graded cards of any reason, um, this video is going to be really insightful for you because it's going to share my experience with you on buying these PSA cards and buying them for the intention of making a little bit of profit from them or holding on to them, making, flipping them for some profit and really give you some insight into what my experience has been like as a first time buyer of PSA and Beckett cards and what my experience has been like on eBay and um, I guess investing in some of these cards and seeing what happens with them. So as of now, let me show you guys what I have. So I have this, this is my favorite card that I, I purchased. Uh, this is a BG, oh not a BGS, this is a PSA 10 Mew EX card from Radiant Collections Black and White Era. Well, I think it's Legendary Treasures, I think. This card, I'm telling you right now, is magnificent. This card right here in a, uh, in a PSA 10 that I think there are close to maybe 40 or 50 of them population. Don't quote me on that. And there are around over double the amount of PSA 9s. So I'll tell you a little bit of the story of my PSA cards just to give you some context to what I'm about to talk about. I bought this card with the intention of uh, flipping it. All right. Now, now that I have it in my possession, I don't want to sell it because it's so beautiful. But this card was, uh, in my opinion, undervalued. I purchased this for three hundred dollars. Okay, three hundred dollars in a PSA ten. I felt like it was undervalued. I thought it was a good deal, and I still had it in my collection. And I have not listed this card on eBay to date. Okay. The Umbreon, we have a unlimited Neo Discovery Umbreon Holo, PSA 9, incredible card. I, I cannot get over how amazing these artworks are. I will preface this by saying that most of the cards that I purchased were because I had a personal interest in these artworks. Um, I have a design background. I really um, have a passion for visuals. I, I really love being able to see things. I've done logo design, branding. Um, for the last 10 years and that's something that I really am passionate about so when it comes to Pokemon cards I value that very highly in my mind and so when I bought these cards it was with the um, the love and the passion that I had for my design and colors and creativity so another reason like you know kind of combining two different interests and passions I have like Pokemon which is mostly nostalgic for all of us this Umbreon is really special to me because it was the first ever card that I won an auction on. It was through the PWCC auctions actually, this Umbreon, and it is it is incredible. Now at the time, this card, when I was doing my research, I looked up pricing for this. This was going for around 450, I would say, 400, 450, $500. It looked like it was comfortably gonna be able to sell for. Now, when I bid this on auction the last few seconds, I think I bid up to $370, but I ended up picking this up for $360. Or well, maybe it was like, I think I bid at $340, $350. With fees, it was up to $365. I purchased this. Um, I thought it was a great deal, and I snagged it. And I was super, super happy. This is my first ever um, PSA card that I bought. So that's really special to me, this card. Now, this card right here is currently still on eBay. Okay, now I'll get into that in just a little bit. Typhlosion, this is a BGS9 Typhlosion Unlimited. Now this is the less desirable artwork. I believe it's card 918. I think the 17 is the most popular. Uh, don't quote me on that. Let me know if uh, it's, it's otherwise in the comments. But this Typhlosion um, it has some good grades as well. But this was the second card that I purchased with an auction. I purchased this for $163 or $62, I believe, 
with fees included on eBay. And one, this is a PWCC auctions as well. I was so stoked about this card. Like, I was so, so happy that I got for this price. This card right here is one of the cards that I knew I'd make the most profit off, okay? This card is currently listed on eBay. All right. The next card, I'm just going to talk about these two. We're going to blast through these so I can get to talking about um, some of the stuff in this video. This is a Latios and Latias PSA 9 from, let's see, Black and White Era Plasma Freeze, okay? So they're kind of the duo, right? I love these cards. They're pretty cool. Um, I kind of like, when I got them in person, they look cool, but they're not as nice as some of the other ones that I have. And they are currently listed on eBay as well. Not much to them. I just thought it'd be cool to buy both of them. I thought they were slightly undervalued, so I'd purchase them and see how it goes. So those are those cards there, all right? The other one I purchased was a Charizard from Arceus, Arceus, however you want to say it, Platinum. Um, this is a Charizard Holo, nothing fancy about it, just a Holo card. It's not a rare, a secret rare, or anything like that. This is from 2009. This is $160. Yeah, I picked this up for $160. thought it was a great deal, um, to be honest, and I think it still is. Um, but it's a really nice card. It's a Holo. There's two different versions of the Holo, I believe. This is just the normal sparkly one. I think there's like a Prism one, I think, or a, yeah, something like that. But great card. This is also listed on eBay right now. Dark Dragonite, first edition. Now, I'm going to fool you here. It's actually a PSA 6, so it's not a super high grade. Now, this card looks very, very mint. It doesn't have, like, much whitening at all. The problem with this card is the holo. It has a lot of scratches. I'm probably not going to be able to show you guys if there's any scratches in the holo, but it's a great-looking card. This card right here is literally one of the most nostalgic favorite card that I have right now. This card to me, I bought this because I wanted the, the PSA 10 Dra Duck Dragonite first edition, which is too far out of like how much I wanted to pay for. I think they're going for over two grand now. And I just didn't want to pay that much for this card. So I got this card a lower PSA grade because I just wanted to have it in my collection as an inspiration that one day I'll be able to buy a PSA 10 Duck Dragonite first edition because this card is absolutely beautiful. I love this card so much. So this card is not up for sale because I don't want to sell it. It's more of just a piece for me. So that's the Dark Dragonite. And this card here, Kabutops, is a unlimited base set fossil. Uh, it's a PSA 8. I picked this up for around $54, I believe. $54. Uh, I wasn't able to mention the prices of these Latios and Latias. I think I picked these up for $50 and $40 or something like that each. So, there, that's that price there. So that's the last one I had. I had another Clefairy Unlimited, but I also sold that, made a little bit of profit on that. I purchased it for around $27, I think, and I sold it for $42, I believe, something like that. So these are all the PSA and Beckett cards that I have currently graded in my collection, you could say, but more in my investment portfolio. Now, I want to show these because I want to talk about my experience with these cards. Now, as you can see, I have most of the cards that I purchased already still with me. It's been a total of almost 30 days since I've listed these on eBay. Now, what I've come to understand a little bit about these cards is my theory going into buying PSA and Beckett cards was that I was going to be able to buy these, list them the next week, and then they sell right away. That hasn't been the case. Even considering the fact that these cards were the cheapest on the market, like for example, this Typhlosion and this Umbreon are the two of the cheapest cards on the market for this card. It, they, they are, in fact, the cheapest cards in the market as of last time I checked. And they still will not sell. Now, why is that? I don't know, okay? These two cards right here, I don't know why they haven't sold yet. And I'll kind of share more of my conclusions in a minute. These two cards, I have received an offer on this, but it was recently retracted. But even so, I was about going to break even on these cards to sell them when, you know, I've had them for three weeks, right? This one I haven't, you know, sold. I'm not going to sell. Kabutops, nothing. Charizard, um, nothing much yet. I haven't listed this either because this is like an amazing card and, and I think this this really still is undervalued and could be worth a lot more in the future. The last one that sold after I bought it, I think it sold for $350. So it's about a $50 markup. So I don't know how much. There's currently none of these on the market at all. So I might even list this. I could list it maybe $500, $450 and see and with best offer and see what I can get. By the way, these cards right here, I would have expected 
to sell, right? Other than these two here, which I'll put over here. I would have expected these cards to sell. Now, why didn't they sell? Considering that the Pokemon market is continuing to skyrocket. I and, and guys, like I'd love to hear your impressions and your thoughts and your opinions down below in the comments. Feel free to leave your opinions and comments. I'm open to all of them. I consider all of them. Um, so go ahead and leave a comment. This Umbreon and Typhlosion, I, I still am a little bit surprised at why they haven't sold yet. As I said, they're the cheapest on the market. Now, my speculation is the reason why I haven't been able to sell these just from, like, you know, being so involved and consumed in the Pokemon market, I feel like they haven't sold because people aren't looking for cards that aren't really hot, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is both this Umbreon and Typhlosion, they're not first edition. This this Kabutops, not first edition. This Charizard, it's a 2009. These two Latios and Latios cards are from Plasma Freeds, black and white. Now, yes, they're older, right? They're seven, eight years old, but it doesn't matter. What I'm starting to realize about Pokemon and, and what people are talking about when they're talking about investing and be careful what you're buying and don't be buying unlimited non-commons and uncommons is because they, if they're not desirable enough, they're going to be very, very hard for you to sell. And what's going to happen is you're going to be tying up cash. Now, when I'm selling these, what are people thinking when they're finding these cards? They're like, well, can I buy this and resell it and make profit, right? That's what some people are coming into eBay looking at. Now, are these people trying to collect these for their collection? I don't know. Are the people trying to hold it on for a long-term investment? I think there are some people. But if people are coming in and they're looking to make some quick money flipping cards, almost kind of how I was, you know, which I now know is, is wrong and, and not the right way to look at it, no one's going to buy these cards if it doesn't make sense. They're not desirable enough yet. They're not, they're not hot enough for people to just be like, oh yeah, one comes on the market and it's sold. For example, I recently pulled with my wife, been pretty, pretty lucky, just pulling up a picture here for you. These two Charizard VMAXs from Champion's Path, okay? Now, we made the decision that it would make more sense if we sold these cards on eBay because the set was so new. We pulled these cards from, I think, 93 packs. I've done another video on that if you'd like to go and watch that. So go and, go and check that out too or after this video. And we decided that it'd be best to sell. Now, I, I wanted to kind of talk about this in another video, but in, in, just, in just one of... Or, or both of these listings we put on eBay, thousands, over a thousand views on each card within 24 hours. I had a, a 24 hour auction on these cards. All right. 24 hour auction on these Charizard VMAXs from Champions Path. Over a thousand views, tons of bids, started at one cent bids, right? And these cards went so quick. Like the bids just kept going up and up and up. And there were like 70 people watching this card by the end of the 24 hours. Absolutely insane. Now, what do I have on these cards in 20 days? Oh, I have like maybe five to 10 people watching these cards. So the skill that as, as investors or collectors or understanding, just understanding Pokemon, right? Because if you're a collector, if you're wanting to complete your binary, like it's, you know, and, and you want to sit on cards because you're a collector, well, it, it's smart for you to buy stuff that's hot, right? It's smart for you to buy stuff that people want because when it does come time that you're ready to sell some cards, maybe you want to sell some cards to make buy some extra packs, right? Maybe you want to sell some cards to buy some other different cards, you want to make sure you have some of these cards that you can sell off really quickly, right? These cards are not it right now. And that's why I've been having such a hard time. These Charizard VMAXs within a 24-hour period, over 1,000 views per listing, 70 people watching it, they sell like hotcakes, right? Just like this card we pulled as well, believe it or not. We pulled this Charizard V. We have live reactions of the pool. My wife and I opened some more Champions Path just the other day. Uh, make sure you go and check out that video if you haven't already, but live reactions from both of us. 
This card also decided to sell because it, Champions Path is so hot and it allows us, yes, is there some sentimental value in that card? There is definitely sentimental value. I pulled that card, right? I want to keep it. I'm just turn on the brightness here for you a little bit. But to us, it makes more sense to sell that card and get the money so we can invest or purchase other packs so we can open more packs because that's that's the fun of it right it's the nostalgia it's the collecting that's what we enjoy right so summing up on my thoughts here hopefully you've gotten some value out of this video and you've kind of been able to kind of see where my head's been at and my experience through having some psa cards hopefully it gives you some direction when it comes to buying your own cards that you're really thinking about this because if you think you can just buy any cards and they're going to go up it's incorrect they will not, it will not be the case unless you're able to identify cards that are hot. Now, what card is hot? Well, obviously, a Charizard, right? Any Charizard is, is generally hot. But believe it or not, even this Charizard is tough to sell because it's not really, it, it's, it's not a special Charizard. It's, it's, not, it, it's just a normal card. Now, if you understand the sets, you understand there are secret rares and ultra rares and commons and uncommons and you know stuff like that you would know that this card isn't hard to get right so the supply could be a lot higher on this card than say you know this mew over here right so just or, or the you know comparing this charizard to that this is a secret rare charizard right it's a lot harder to get but this Charizard is just a normal holo charizard in the set right it has a number right it's uh one of 99 okay in the bottom right hand corner so remember when you're looking to, if you're looking to either make money off these cards, keep in mind that just because there's a good deal doesn't mean you should buy it and doesn't mean that you're going to be able to flip it next week. Right, the, right now, these, these cards are being held up and this is, you know, hurting cash flow, right? Because this is just money sitting and not being sold. Now, I'm probably going to have to either break even on these cards. This card for sure I'm making profit, probably around... You know, fifty to a hundred dollars on this card for sure. Got it listed for three hundred now, but it should I should be able to sell it around two fifty. This card uh, might break even on that, but all these cards, you know, maybe able to make a little bit of profit. But at the end of the day, like if you're looking to make profit, you've got to get the hot cards and you've got to be able to understand the market. So that's my takeaway. So going forward, I I I kind of want to be involved in lots of different areas collecting is is a huge passion of mine obviously with it as kids but i want inv investing in pokemon to become a thing where i can invest and i can make money selling and doing pokemon related things because then i can fund my collection then i can be more involved in pokemon if if i can if i can make some money with pokemon then i'm combining my passion with being able to support myself and do this more for you guys and do this more for other people to share my experiences to help you fall in love with pokemon again all right so got really dark here just for a second so hopefully it's been helpful i feel like i'm rambling a little bit i'm going to wrap this up hopefully you've gotten a lot of value leave a like on this video if you found some value from this video and if you are interested in seeing more videos around this topic and talking about it please leave comments below i'd love to answer any questions you have about my experiences about some of these more questions about these cards and just help you when it comes to this stuff because i'm just sharing my journey my experience with them and i just hope that it's somewhat valuable to you and you can take away some things from this video and apply it into um you know your everyday so you don't have to tie up cash like i did i mean this is around like a thousand dollars of cards uh, roughly sitting here and that's a thousand dollars that could be my bank account right so again leave a like on this video really really appreciate it my name is jordan with pokefuel helping you fuel your obsession with pokemon and until next time i will see you in the next video